Medical professionals of Reddit, when did you have to tell a patient I've seen it all before to comfort them, but really you had never seen something so bad, or of that nature? I'm a nurse and I work in a pediatric ER. A young woman brought her baby in to be seen for vomiting. I ask her to put the baby on the scale. While on the scale I notice a strong odor of bug spray so I asked about it. Mom, a roach crawled into her mouth so I sprayed a little raid in there. She said it matter of factually like it was no big deal. K up calls to the police, CPS and a 121 sitter for the child and the mom. When all was said and done the baby was fine and turned over to her grandmother so no worries there. I have no idea what happened to the mother. I don't believe she was intending to hurt the child. I think she was just but a ignorant. A roach crawled into her mouth? Foul. Just foul. That poor kid deserves better. I worked as a mental health tech to get through undergrad. 15F in the adolescent ward claims to have swallowed a staple. A, but whatever, as I'm taking her down to x-ray I tell her about the dime I swallowed when I was a kid. It happens. Well, turns out she underestimated the number of staples by around a hundred. Every printout given by the therapists had been a swallowed staple. She had gotten staples from the other kids. The x-ray of her abdomen looked as if it were a weird staple Y snow globe. And yet, somehow, she was back to trying to steal psych ward staples a week later. Never did figure out how they removed them all. Never did figure out how they removed them all. With a staple remover. This one of those threads you hate yourself for reading but can't stop. Not a medical professional, but a story about my father. After years of a blood disease, his spleen had to be removed as it had swollen to a size that made breathing difficult. Apparently the surgeon had a photo taken, post-extraction, where he is cradling my dad's approximately 22.0 pound spleen. To top it off, one day into recovery, when doing on of those gentle push on the abdomen type exams on him, my dad's sutures catastrophically failed and he let loose a spray that coated the doctor, his nurse, and a good portion of the ceiling. Luckily for dad, the hospital staff was on point that day and kept him alive despite his body's best effort. I heard all of this from the doctor while he was removing the line of staples that went from crotch to sternum some weeks later. Dad didn't like to share, apparently. My aunt started her nursing career in a county hospital, which means you get all the homeless folks. A guy came in with the hole of the back of his leg and butt utterly and very deeply infested with maggots. He just hadn't gotten around to coming in earlier, he said. The depressing thing is that while it was a first for my aunt, it was by no means the last. Apparently it's more common than you'd think. As a medical student doing my first placement in the emergency department, I was waiting outside the triage room to ask the nurse something. I was the lowest ranking, most clueless person in the department. I knew a lot about the Krebs cycle, not a whole lot about, you know, medicine. A young man came up to me and said he was sorry to disturb me, he just wanted to check, it was just, well, not to cue jump or anything, but he wanted to check, can this definitely wait for triage? He then unwrapped a towel from his hand and showed me his thumb, which he had dropped a loaded barbell onto. It was shattered, just flattened, with splinters of bone coming out. I stared at it. He stared at it. I stared at it. Then I told him oh yes, no problem at all, he'd better take a seat and I'd make sure someone was with him right away. How the F can you be so nonchalant about crushing your F thumb into oblivion? In 2011 I had a saddle pulmonary embolism two weeks before my scheduled wedding. My quite seasoned heart surgeon seemed pretty confident that I'd be okay, and he even said he'd get me to my wedding on time. Long story short, I was in the hospital for about a month due to complications. Several weeks later, when I was visiting my heart surgeon for a follow-up, he told me he'd only ever seen two other people as sick as I was. Those two didn't survive. Third time's the charm. Genital warts the size of grapes on the guy's D. Quoth he, the ladies never complain. Nope. I'm out. F this nightmare thread. Not after the cottage cheese story and now grape warts. I had to see an orthopedist oncologist because I had two sarcomas. One in my left thigh in the sciatic nerve and one in my left pelvic. 
My surgeon said he would get both out and the most I would get would be a drop foot where you can't lift up your foot on your own. I went back two years later and my doctor told me he thought he would have to remove my leg because of how the sarcomas were enmeshed in my bones, muscle, and nerves. I honestly thought the whole time that it was an easy out. Though the two 10-hour surgeries may have been a clue that it wasn't so simple. These days I have a limp as I'm missing half my left pelvic bone and most of my glute and thigh muscle but I got to keep the leg. A patient with rectal cancer with an exposed colon and rectum. I could see her tailbone and in the head of the femur. And whenever she would poop, it could collect inside this open cavity and had to be flushed out. One guy had AP inflammation. Was like 14 inches long and 6 wide. I could practically sense the pain. Obligatory not a medical professional, but a first aider. I was doing a duty at the finish line of the London Marathon as I have done for many years. I've seen enough chafing, dehydration and blisters galore. Someone always has the worst of the day but it happens so fast that you can hardly mentally tally whose nipples were the most raw. Until I had a runner come in covered in blood complaining that her nipples had completely gone. She had chafed so bad that her nipples and areolas were rubbed to nothing. And the worst part was that she had her nipples pierced and the piercings had embedded themselves in her exposed breast tissue. I had to talk her through sterilizing the wounds while trying to or her that it happens to everyone. The image of a nipple bar peeking out of red, raw breast tissue will haunt me. Years ago my then 11-year-old shattered both femurs and her hip. At the time, her orthopedic specialist was so reoring and confident that we had no doubts about her recovery. A year later, we went back for a review and he asked me if I'd like to see her trauma x-rays. Not having any idea of the reality I said yes. What I saw looked like her leg bones had exploded. After my freaked out reaction I commented on how cool and calm he was, and how certain that she'd be fine. He said he'd actually had to go for a short walk around the hospital to collect his thoughts since he had no idea how he would put this child back together. He also told me had used the films as a teaching aid. He's one of my heroes. You're going to have to explain how one shatters both femurs and a hip. And if she's walking now. 